Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. It is June the 2nd, 2012, and today James Kirkland is being ripped all over the internet, all over the blogosphere, for withdrawing from a planned fight with Saul Alvarez. Apparently Kirkland, according to reports, was to get a million dollars and Kirkland apparently is asking for 2.5 million dollars and the general mood is how dare he you know why doesn't Kirkland just take this opportunity it's a great fight a million dollars is a lot of money why did Kirkland string us along there's also resentment over the cover story that's what it's being perceived as uh, that Kirkland is too injured to go forward with the fight. Now, I know that in an earlier video, I said that uh, in a different fight, with different fighters, with different bank accounts, at different stages of their career, I know that I was encouraging Floyd Mayweather to give Manny Pacquiao a 50-50 split to make that fight happen, right? And... Based on the emails I've received, the feeling is that I'm somehow, um, you know, in favor of management over fighters and that I believe fighters should take less money. You know, actually, the opposite is true. I'm very pro fighter. I believe in the Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao situation, Floyd would be compensated by the increase in legacy, especially since I believe Floyd Mayweather wins that fight and I believe Floyd knows that there's a big legacy component. That's why in 2010, according to reports all over the internet today, Floyd offered Manny Pacquiao a 50-50 split, right? That's a different situation than this situation. I believe that James Kirkland should try to get every penny that he can, right? Let me make a few points. People also know in an earlier video, I've pointed out that there's no money in boxing. Uh, just look at the number of contenders who literally had day jobs while they were contenders, right? Paul Wolak comes to mind. Peter Manfredo. There are very few full-time fighters in the sport, right? Also, just look at the trainers of world-class fighters who actually still have their day jobs, right? Danny Garcia, the trainer for Victor Ortiz. You know, um, at least as recently as Ortiz's fight against Floyd Mayweather actually had a day job. If the sport was that lucrative, these guys would certainly be financially well compensated by the time their contenders that's simply not the case. Glenn Johnson, a former champion, in his 40s, had to take fights for less than $20,000 to remain viable for a shot at the title, right? Even the OGs have to struggle for bucks, right? Take a look at the crowd for the Roy Jones-Bernard Hopkins rematch. Understand, there's an open question based on the contract on whether Roy Jones, a huge name, even got paid for that fight. So understand the way boxing operates. You can be a young phenom. You can be a great young fighter. And you could be operating in the red because the people around you also have families. They deserve to get fed. So, you know, your trainer... Your cut man, your sparring partners, your manager, your promoter, they're all getting money out of the till too. So some of these fighters literally are being financially supported by their management groups, right? And let me just say too, one of the best investments a young fighter can make is actually in having a great management group. I know people balk at the idea of giving away 33 to 50% of their purse. But you really have to think about the fact that a good management group is getting you the purse. 
right? I'd rather have 50% of 100 than 100% of nothing. Well, anyway, let's talk about James Kirkland. The point I'm making is simply that James Kirkland hasn't made big money to date. The way boxing is, is everyone's just trying to position themselves for the big payday. Because, of course, careers can change on one fight. You get a detached retina, that could knock you out for a year. Right? Sometimes a doctor is even worse news. That your career is over. Not only that, forget the health risks. You get knocked out. You get embarrassed. You get exposed. You might lose that TV deal, even if you're an excellent fighter. You might lose that TV deal. Opponents who are secretly afraid of you, don't want to deal with you, now can openly avoid you. You can imagine, there are guys right now avoiding Sergio Martinez. Canelo among them, right? Um, literally, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., has literally gone several fights avoiding Sergio Martinez. There's even an open question on whether Chavez Jr. is going to proceed with fighting Martinez if he gets by Andy Lee, right? And that's a healthy Martinez. You could imagine if Sergio Martinez ever lost a fight where he looked bad based on styles, you know what? All of these guys avoiding Sergio Martinez today would have an interest you know, would have an excuse not to fight him tomorrow, right? Amir Khan lost to Lamont Peterson. I'm just telling you there are a lot of people in boxing right now who are saying, who, thank goodness, you know, I can now dodge Khan. I can face other guys, right? I don't have to get back to Khan. I can pretend that he's not a worthy opponent for at least a few months, right? And so my point to you is simply this. You know, James Kirkland has to literally take advantage of the best opportunity afforded him, right? Whether he takes this fight or not, his name will remain in the public discussion. Canelo is not the only champion at 154 pounds. Quite frankly, we really don't know what other offers James Kirkland has received. Right, assuming he's healthy, and that's a big assumption, cause he did have tears in his shoulder, right? That's online, right? It's it's not a shaky MRI, he had tears in his shoulder. He had a recovery schedule, right? Assuming he's healthy, James Kirkland might privately believe or may have been offered more money to fight someone like Miguel Cotto, big name, has a you know, had a belt at 154 pounds right might have heard from the mayweather camp the rumor is mayweather wants another fight this year after he gets out uh he wants another fight this year maybe the mayweather people have said to kirkland hey you know before you sign a contract talk to us keep in mind there are other champs cornelius brundage is actually fighting Corey spinks there's going to be a winner of that fight Maybe they have said to Kirkland, hey, we'll fight you. Maybe Kirkland has thought to himself, you know what? This is a shorter road to a title than fighting a young, vibrant Saul Alvarez, right? And so my point is simply this. Before we badmouth Kirkland, understand we don't know the other offers James Kirkland has in the background, right? Kirkland's offers aren't in a vacuum. Right, Whether he takes this fight or not, he's known. He doesn't have to risk his reputation on this particular fight to get a title shot. Let's go one step further. Right, That's the first reason. You don't know the other offers. The second reason why I'm actually backing Kirkland in his decision to withdraw from the fight right now, or at least to continue to negotiate, is that you don't know the real status of the negotiation. You know, promoters are great at getting their side of the story out. And we're, you know, supposedly, we're being led to believe that there was an agreement. And now James Kirkland is reneging on this agreement. You know what? There might never have been an agreement. Boxing is hazy. 
You don't know whether an offer was made to Kirkland with a request for either an acceptance or a counter offer and whether Kirkland's counter is the $2.5 million. What we really don't know. And keep in mind, these negotiations are supposed to be private. It's a little bit disturbing that we're getting all of this information before there's a signed contract. Right? Also, you know how negotiations work. You don't start a negotiation by asking for minimum wage. These are fighters looking for the big payday. Right? So, the fact that James Kirkland may have asked for $2.5 million doesn't mean that that's going to be the end result of the negotiation. You come in, you start high, you hear the other responses. You don't come into a negotiation starting low, right? Let's get to the most important point, the money. You know what? James Kirkland should get a healthy share of the total revenue for the event. Right? Understand there's an actual event. None of us should be in the background saying, well, is Kirkland worth a million dollars? That's not the way it goes. What we should do is say, how much money is this event going to generate? Right? Since Kirkland would be in the main event portion of this event, fighting in the biggest fight on this event, then if this event is going to get 10 million or more dollars, I don't think it's unreasonable for James Kirkland to ask for at least a couple million dollars, if not 2.5 million. Well, let's do the math on this event. Knowing that Saul Alvarez is very popular, he just fought on Floyd Mayweather's card, and that card generated 1.5 million pay-per-views, right? Now, let's be conservative here. Let's say this event generates 500,000 views, right? Pay-per-view buys. Canelo's supposed to be a cash cow at $50 a pop. I'm using 50 because it's an easy number as opposed to the higher number that the Floyd Mayweather Cotto fight went for. Let's say $50 a pop, 500,000 pay-per-view buys. We haven't even gotten to the live gate. Right? 500,000 times 50, believe it or not, gets you $25 million. Now, let's say we're going to compensate the pay-per-view people. Let's say we're also going to compensate the promoters. Let's take a healthy 50% off the top of that $25 million. Right? Just cut 50% right off the top. That still leaves $12.5 million, right? That's after paying the pay-per-view people. That leaves $12.5 million. Even if the numbers are lower, let's cut them in half. Instead of 500,000 pay-per-view buys, let's say it's 250,000 pay-per-view buys. The fighters would still be splitting more than $6 million. Think about that. So James Kirkland's request for $2.5 million really isn't that outlandish. Right? He's, he's in the main event. Right? Canelo would still get most of the money. And so I don't, I don't see why everyone's aghast at James Kirkland asking for a reasonable split of the pay-per-view. Let me go one step further. And keep in mind, those numbers I just bandied around didn't include the live gate. But let's go one step further. Right? Um, Canelo wants a big fight. He wants to keep himself in the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao sweepstakes. Now, we all know, style-wise, that a fight between him and James Kirkland is combustible, right? You got two guys with big punches. Somebody's going to get hit, right? Punches are going to be landed in that fight, right? Well, let me just say, 
do you think that a fight against and these fighters are talented but style wise not as combustible as James Kirkland do you believe that a fight against Austin Trout is going to generate the excitement that Canelo would get by fighting James Kirkland you know do you feel that a fight against Corey Spinks or Cornelius Brundage is going to whet the appetites of boxing fans like a fight against James Kirkland is it going to give you the highlights that a fight against James Kirkland would give you I mean while Kirkland needs Canelo right doesn't Canelo also need Kirkland let me go another step further you know let's not kid ourselves while I give Canelo credit for taking a difficult fight it's not like James Kirkland is the most worthy opponent for Canelo Canelo's not taking the hardest opponent right as I mentioned in an earlier video Carlos Molina on Harold Letterman's scorecard was ahead of James Kirkland by seven rounds seven right I don't see Canelo rushing to fight him right what about Miguel Cotto didn't he just have the belt at 154 before his fight with Floyd I don't see Canelo rushing to fight him right what about Sergio Martinez Martinez offered to drop to 150 at one point to fight Pacquiao or Mayweather I don't see Canelo calling out Saul Alvarez I mean uh, uh, Sergio Martinez saying hey forget those other guys fight me at 154 while I'm unbeaten right so Canelo is cherry-picking he's not he's not going out to fight the toughest he wants James Kirkland because he understands that fighting Kirkland could help his legacy right just like Floyd would get a legacy bump if he beats Pacquiao you know what Canelo gets a legacy bump if he beats James Kirkland so I'm all for James Kirkland saying whoa wait a moment this event might net 25 million dollars I want 10 percent of it 2.5 million I could also see James Kirkland saying hey, hey wait a moment you know my shoulders not completely a hundred percent and if I wait I might get a shot on Miguel Cotto Floyd Mayweather yeah my name's still in play at 154 pounds maybe the winner of you know Victor Ortiz's next fight is a viable opponent right and so you know all I'm saying is I think James Kirkland's being reasonable the only thing that's unreasonable here is the fact that while these guys were privately negotiating a deal right for whatever reason the details got leaked to the public so now a fighter like James Kirkland who you know is willing to discuss fighting Canelo is willing to push himself is willing to fight an unbeaten champion he's getting maligned for not accepting the initial offer given him right let's give Kirkland a break here let's hope that everyone comes to their senses let's hope that people think about the possibility that this event might net 25 million and the idea of a fighter asking for 2.5 isn't that far-fetched let me also say too that a fighter can ask for 2.5 and then the promoter can say hey that's too much risk and they can work it so that if the event generates 500,000 pay-per-view buys then the fighter gets upside participation in the pay-per-view revenue the 2.5 doesn't necessarily have to be a guarantee right all Kirkland is doing is trying to negotiate the best deal for himself all of us should be thinking about trying to do that in our own lives let me know what you think leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.